This is why you should never spy on your neighbors. You'll never know what you might find. Our story opens with Kale, a young high school student, and his father, Broccoli, I mean Daniel, fishing in a freshwater swamp. On their way home, they get in a deadly three-way car accident. Rip in peace, Dad. That was one year ago. Now in the present day, we see Kale asleep in a Spanish class. The teacher, Senor Guterres, throws a whiteboard eraser at him to wake him up. He confronts Kale and asks him why he shouldn't fail him on the spot. Then, he hits him with the What would your father think? Sir, those are fighting words. Uh-oh, now we're in court. We see Kale and his mother along with his teacher. The judge, aware of Kale's recent loss, sentences him to just three months of wearing a weird ankle bracelet during the summer holidays. Back at home, we see two officers fitting Kale with said bracelet. There is a 100 meter radius surrounding the GPS modem and if he steps outside of the radius or unplugs it, the popo come knocking. In the event he steps outside, he has just 10 seconds before an AC-130 is called to his location. No cap. As Kale's mother goes into the other room to pay the incarceration fee, he's left alone with the other officer. Your Spanish teacher? It's my cousin. <laughs> well, your cousin's a little bit. With nothing better to do, Kale starts his three month house rest by binging every episode of Minute Movies. Thanks for the views. Now, what better snack to enjoy that than extra crunchy peanut butter covered in Hershey's chocolate sauce? What, you can't handle the taste? <laughs> weak. Later, his mom comes home, disgusted at the environment he's been lazing around in. Relatable. Out of frustration, she cuts the cable connection and cancels his Roblox subscription. Talk about tough love. Clean up your room. Kale spends the next few hours doing laundry, cleaning the house, and pounding down Red Bull. Well, that didn't last long. Later, Kale wakes up to the sound of a moving truck and looks out his window to find a new family moving in next door. He looks on with interest, though he's quickly interrupted as the doorbell rings. He opens it to find a burning paper bag. He puts it down with his foot, though soon realizes his mistake. He just stepped in chocolate. Okay, no, that's poop. He spots the two culprits and chases after them on the main road. Bill, you said he couldn't leave his house. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. He looks down and notices that his GPS tracker is flashing red. Uh-oh. He sprints back to his house, though he's a second too late. The cops pull up shortly after. As he lays on the ground, handcuffed, he notices Ashley. Boy, I'd much rather see her in handcuffs than me. For Kale, it's love at first sight. Later, he chats with Detective Parker on the phone. She tells him that he's being let off this time, but it better not happen again. Determined to keep that promise, he assesses the GPS's range and plots out a makeshift barrier around the house so he knows where he's allowed to go. Suddenly, he spots Ashley pulling up into her driveway. But, because he's a beta male, he ducks down under the bushes before rushing inside to avoid being seen. Come on, Kale. Don't you know girls love confidence? Just be yourself, bro. Afterwards, he heads upstairs to have a peek at Ashley through the window. Dude, not cool. Although, with the lack of internet and TV, I understand. A few days later, Ronnie, his best friend, knocks on the door. They haven't seen each other in ages, so Kale gives him a warm welcome. As they make their way up the stairs, Kale explains what he's been doing the last few days to satisfy his boredom. He hands Ronnie a pair of binoculars and reveals that he's been spying on his neighbors. He shows that one of them, Mr. Pilsch, is engaging in extracurricular activities with his maid while his wife is at the country club. Damn, this shit better than reality TV. I'm not a stalker. These are just simple observations. Understandable. Enjoy your viewing. Next up, he leads Ronnie to the living room and shows him his favorite person to spy on, Ashley. Later that day, Kale can be seen doing a little reach around. This is the length he has to go through to not trigger that alarm. Suddenly, Ashley appears and offers her help. The pair talk for a moment before her mom calls her away. That evening, while his mom is dozing off, he watches the news channel discovering a recent kidnapping in the suburbs. Eh, boring. Let's tune into a late night broadcast of yoga instead. Ooh, I love this channel. Oh shit, I've been spotted. He ducks down before realizing that it's much too dark for her to see him. Back to the Ashley show, her dad barges into her room and shouts at her before slamming the door closed. Rude. After she goes to bed, he sees that one of his neighbors, Mr. Turner, arrives home suspiciously late. As the neighbor gets back in his car and leaves, Kale notices that it's the same as the kidnapper's car described on the news a Mustang with a dent on the front bumper. Sus. The next day, Kale decides to further investigate his suspicious neighbor. He hides behind his fence just within the radius of the GPS modem. Suddenly, his neighbor spots him and approaches the fence. What are you doing? <laughs> Kale is relieved to learn that the neighbor was simply getting confrontational with a rabbit. I caught you. Oof, close one. Later that day, Ronnie is back at Kale's house. They talk about the recent events. Bro, I'm pretty sure my neighbor is a kidnapper. Oh, cool. Anyway, let's look at Ashley. Going for another swim, I see. We're going swimming. Kale hands binoculars to Ronnie, who leans in a little too far. Oh god. The two boys drop to the ground, fearing that she heard the bang. Kale peeks out the window again, and he and Ashley make eye contact. Moments later, the doorbell rings, and the two boys stumble on their way down the stairs. After they muster up their courage, they open the door, revealing Ashley. What took you so long? A suspicious Ashley makes her way up to Kale's bedroom, before grabbing his binoculars. Have you been spying on me? What? No, of, <laughs> of course not. Awkward. Fortunately, they clutch by convincing her that they're only spying on Mr. Turner, the potential cold-blooded killer 
from Texas. Right. They mention his car's description, but when Ashley has a look, she finds that the fender is fine. Bro, what the heck are you doing? <sighs> Later that night, the three teens set themselves up for a stakeout. Ronnie gets a bunch of snooping equipment from his uncle, and they proceed with a night of sussy spying. After a few hours of mindlessly watching on, they finally spot Mr. Turner pulling up. But he has a completely new whip. He opens the door of his car and leads his new friend inside. Oh. Suddenly, he pulls out a sharp knife and prepares to hit it from behind. The two teens look on with horror, but before he penetrates, he ends up cutting off the price tag from her new dress instead. Oh, he's a sugar daddy. That's only slightly less worse than a kidnapper. Well, so much for that murder mystery. The group ends up calling it a night and Cam walks Ashley back home. Well, as far as he can. Guess this is as far as you go. The pair share a romantic moment before Kale heads back. After returning to his room, he immediately starts spying on Mr. Turner again. My boy's addicted. This time, upon looking through the camera, he sees the woman running to escape the house. He begins recording the incident, but this dummy leaves the flash on. Filled with fear, he drops to the ground and holds the camera above his head to see what's going on. He can't see anything, so he stands back up and looks through the binoculars. Uh-oh, I'm screwed. Then, Kale's phone rings and he crawls across the floor to pick it up. It's Ronnie. Kale frantically explains the situation, but as he's doing so... <laughs> He looks out and sees the girl getting back into her car and driving off. I'm sure this is normal, Kale. Every guy has a story about that one girl who got away. The next morning, and as he's making breakfast, ah! Kale grabs his knife and questions his neighbor. What are you doing in my house? But then, Kale's mother enters the room holding grocery bags and explaining that she ran into Mr. Turner, aka Robert, at the store on her way out. He offered to change her flat tire, if you know what I mean. No, just kidding, he actually helped her with that. Anyway, his mom remembers that she left the milk in her car, so she heads back to get it leaving Robert and Kale alone in the kitchen. Things get tense as Robert notices Kale's GPS tracker and questions what he did. After Kale reveals that he bonked his teacher, Robert empathizes, citing his time in high school. There are plenty of teachers I wanted to just kill. Way to be subtle. A few moments later, Kale's mom returns with the milk, unlike my dad. Then, Robert makes an offer. Want to go out to dinner sometime? No! Later that evening, Ashley hosts a party at her house while her parents are away. Naturally, Kale gets back to his spying ways. After a few minutes of peeping, he spots another boy hugging and flirting with Ashley. Oh no. In retaliation, Kale decides to blast loud music from his rooftop to disrupt the party. Though, Ashley ends up jumping through his window to unplug the music. She even threatens to throw away his iPod, but then he admits to having been spying on her since she moved in. He tells her about all the small details of her personality that he's noticed. And, somehow, Ashley's totally into this and... They kiss. It's either the creepiest or the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Remember boys, sweet if you're cute, creepy if you're not. Unbeknownst to them, and right next door, Robert's window has just been covered in blood. A few moments later, they hear loud thuds from outside their window. They look out and see the notorious neighbor dragging a bloodied bag down his stairs. The next day, they decide to investigate. Ronnie is tasked with breaking into his car to see what was in the bag. Meanwhile, Ashley follows Robert as he shops, so they know when he's on his way home. Ronnie manages to break into the car when Kale's phone rings. Kale, I lost Turner. You had one job, Ashley. Suspecting that Robert is on his way home, Kale hurries Ronnie to feed him the password to the garage. Meanwhile, as Ashley is driving out of the parking lot, she runs into, you guessed it. Robert tells her that he knows she's been following him. Leave me alone, you damn millennials. Boomer moment. Back at home, the three teens meet and discuss what to do next. Ashley tells them all to drop it, believing that they've taken things too far. Before the conversation can continue, she's once again called away by her mother. Apparently, it's her parents' anniversary. Look at you still having two parents, Ashley. Straight flexing on my boy Kale. Later at night, a determined Kale continues his investigation. He manages to find the blueprints for Robert's house and begins analyzing them. He develops a portable camera system that streams to his TV. As he's wrapping up, Boys, I dropped my phone in his car. Bruh. Kale agrees to help Ronnie get his phone, but first, he needs him to break into Robert's garage with camera in hand. Okay. In the garage, Ronnie manages to find his phone, but Kale wants that bag. Same. Ronnie spots the bag in the corner of the room, exclaiming that it smells horrible. Ugh, I can see hairs in it. Don't take that out of context. Suddenly, the garage door begins to close. A panicked Ronnie runs into the house. Ah! Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. In an effort to save his friend, Kale arms himself with a bat and runs over. Meanwhile, ankle bracelet go brr. Damn, they're fast. Listen, my friend is in this creep's house and there's a body. You lying, boy. Kale pleads with them to check his garage. They oblige. Upon inspecting the blue bag, they find a dead deer that Robert had hit with his car. I mean, technically that's still murder, right? Back at home, Kale is scolded by his mom who reminds him that he has court tomorrow. After, she heads to Robert's house to apologize as Kale watches from his window. Suddenly, he gets a text message from Ronnie telling him to check his TV. Kale turns around and sees Ronnie laying unconscious through the screen. Wait a second. Psych. Just a prank, bro. I wasn't actually dead. You have any idea what I've just been through? Hey! Whoa, relax, buddy. Ronnie explains that he managed to get out of his house and didn't see anything sus inside. Kale ultimately forgives him and explains that his mom went over to apologize to Robert. Ronnie hands him the video camera so they can look over what happened. Be right back, bro. Gotta drain the main vein. 
While watching alone, Kale notices something. <laughs> oh shit, that's the chick that got kidnapped. Just as he realizes this, his mom is attacked by Robert. And it doesn't end there. He makes his way to Kale's house and plays baseball with Ronnie. Sort of. <laughs> then, Robert goes upstairs to attack Kale, but his reflection betrays him, allowing Kale to dodge. He sprints upstairs and tries to unplug the GPS modem, but Robert says, nah. Kale gives it his all, but it just isn't enough. Instead, he decides to run outside in an effort to trigger the alarm. Once again, Robert says, nah, overpowering Kale, knocking him out, and pulling a Fifty Shades of Grey. Kale wakes up in his bedroom as Robert threatens to pin all his crimes onto him. <laughs> no, don't do me like that, bro. Unfortunately, his tears have no effect on Robert. He forces him to write down an admission of guilt, but before he can, Ashley breaks into the house. This gives Kale one last chance to attack Robert. Oh hell yeah, Ashley joins in for a quick assist. Yeah! This gives the pair just enough time to barricade themselves. Ashley proceeds to free Kale while he explains that his mom is at Robert's house. He plans to make his way across the GPS radius, but he's interrupted by... Hello. Before he snatches them up, the two teens jump out the bedroom and into Ashley's pool, triggering the alarm on his foot. Then, he dashes towards Robert's house, breaking down the front door. Meanwhile, the officer is called to Kale's house, but he decides to finish his dinner before heading over. Come on, man. The one time... Back to Robert's house, Kale frantically searches for his mom before uncovering the hidden crawl space under the house. He breaks open the vent and makes his way inside before realizing he's too big to fit. Can't relate. Then, he hears a noise coming from somewhere else in the house and continues his search. He bangs on the walls before accidentally opening a hidden room. Inside, he discovers an operating table and multiple massive freezers. He spots the idea of the kidnapped club girl, along with a red wig. He pushes aside the cupboard, revealing another hidden room. How much could one man have to hide? In this moment, the officer arrives and he hears noises from within Robert's house. He enters to investigate, only to be attacked and iced by Robert. Bummer. Back to Kale, he falls through the ground of the hidden room and into a pit of muddy water. He gets real cozy with all of Robert's previous victims. Terrified, he makes his way out. Then, he finds his mom, who also got the Fifty Shades of Grey treatment. Before he can cut her free, Robert quickly has Kale at death's door, but his mother's protective instincts come in clutch. Having now gained the upper hand, Kale gives Robert a tummy tuck before throwing him down the hole. Now, the corpse soup is complete. Chef's kiss. Soon after, more police pull up as Kale and his mom exit the house safely. A few days later, we see Kale getting his ankle bracelet removed by the detective. I think you're the first one to ever get one of these things taken off early for good behavior. Kale, now a free man, spends the rest of his summer holidays with Ashley, enjoying every moment. God, I wish that were me. Skibbity-bobbity, bop-bop-boom.